Well, I kept my word, and off at once, and shipped on a coaster, owned in Penzance. But it was foreign I wanted, so very soon I joined the Hector, bound for Rangoon. Ah, mates, it was well for flesh and blood to stick to a lass that's sweet and good. Leastways, if she sticks to you, you know. For then, my lads, blow high, blow low, on the stormiest seas and the darkest night, her love is a star that'll keep you right. But there wasn't no sun or star for me, drinking and tearing every spree. And I couldn't keep the devil under, so I don't think there's many of you will wonder. Well, devil or no, the heck to come home. We raced that trip with the flying foam, and up the river the very same tide, and the two of them berthed there side by side. The tight run that, and the whole of it stuck in the paper, logs and all. Good luck. And the captain as proud, and me like a fool, spraying away in Liverpool. The lodgings, of course, for I never could stand them sailors' homes. For a man is a man, and a bell for dinner, and a bell for tea, and a bell to sing, and a bell to pray, and a bell for this, and a bell for that, and wipe your feet upon the mat, and the rules hung up, and fined if you're late, and a chap like a bobby shutting the gate. It isn't reasonable, it isn't. They calls it a home, I calls it a prison. Let a man go where he chooses. Ah, Mother Higgins is the house that I uses. Jem Higgins with her. You'll be bound to know her. Plain, but not particular. There's Quiggins, too, next door but one. Not Andrew, of course, but Rumpy John. She's a decent woman enough as Nancy, but Higgins has always took my fancy. There's some comfort there for you just goes in and down with the watch and down with the tin. And sleeping and waking and eating and drinking and outing in and never thinking and carrying on till all is blue and your jacket is gone and your waistcoat too. Then of course you just cut your stick for the woman must live however thick you may be with her. And I'm told there's houses where people will let you drink your trousers but Higgins says never. But it isn't right. Shirt and trousers on a bright but mostly afore it come to the spout, I'd ask if the money was all run out. And she'd always tell me whether or no, and I'd lave my chiss and away I'd go. And so this time I took the street and I walked along, till I chanced to meet a shipmate somewhere down in Wobbin. And what was I doing? And where was I stopping? And blow it all, here goes the last copper, and into the house to get a cropper. It was one of them dirty, stinking places where the people is not a bit better than bases, and long shore lubbers of shaman to fight, and Jack in his glory and Jack's delight, with their elbows sticking outside of a shawl like the ribs of a wreck and the devil and all, and a chill a cussing and sucking a gin. God help them craters, the white and the thin. But what took my eye was an oldish woman, in and out and going and coming, and heavy feet on the floor overhead. And she's long a dying, there's some of them said. Dying, says I. Yes, dying, says they. Well, it's a rum place to choose to die in, eh? Ah, the old woman was up and she cussed very bad. And choosing? There's no much choosing, my lad. And what's her name, says I? Says she, if you want to know, it's Ginny McGee. Never believe me, but I took the stair. And where have you got her? Where, where, where? Turn to the right, says she, you muff. And there was poor Ginny, sure enough. There she was lying on a wisp of straw, and the dirt and the rags you never saw. And her eyes, oh, them eyes, and her face, well, well. And her that had been such a handsome gal. Tom Baines, Tom Baines, is it you, is it you? Oh, can it be, can it be, can it be true? Well, I couldn't speak, but just a nod. Oh, it's God that sent you, it's God, it's God. And she gasped and gasped. I wronged you, Thomas, I wronged you, I did. 
but he made me promise. And here I am now, and I'm, I know I'll not live. Oh, Thomas, forgive me. Oh, Tom, forgive. Oh, reach me your hand, Tom. Reach me your hand. And she stretched out hers, and I think I'm a man, but I shivered all over, and down by the bed, and hush, hush, Ginny. Hush, hush, I said. Forgive ye? Yes. And I took and pressed her poor weak hand against my breast. Look, Tom, she said. Look there, look there. And a little bundle beside a chair. And there were little arms and there were little legs. And the round, round eyes as big as eggs. And full of wonder. And that's the child, she says. And she smiled. The woman smiled. So I took him up, and his name? It's Simmy. And the little frock and the little chimney. And I star and starved to the bones. So listen to me. Listen now, listen, Jimmy McGee. By him that made me Jimmy Venn, this child is mine forever. Amen. And Simmy, I says, remember this. And I put him to her for her to kiss. And then I kissed him, but the little chap, of course, he didn't understand the rap. And I turned to Ginny, and she tried to rise, and I saw the death light in her eyes. Clasped hands, clenched teeth, and back with the head. Aye, Ginny was dead, boys. Ginny was dead. Come here, I says, and I stamped on the floor. And up the old woman come, to be sure. See after her, I says, old Suki. And, all oh, very well, says she, but looky, you gives yourself terrible airs, young man. Come now, what are you going to stand? But I took the child and says I, I'm going. Indeed, says she, and money owing. And the people be spectin' a drop of drink. And cussin' them, who was she, did I think, and the burying too, for the matter of that. Out of the way, says I, you cat. And down the stair and out at the front. And the loblolly boys shouting, down with the blunt, and a squaring up and looking big, and holin', down with him, here's a rig. Stand back, you Irish curs, stand back, says I, for there wasn't a man on the pack. Stand back, you cowards, or I'll soon let you see. So off we went, little Simeon and me.